So let's take a look at how to do a patch. I'm going to start out just patching on a uh, piece of ripstop nylon. Uh, I personally don't care if you patch on ZP or F111, that's up to you. And I don't think one is any easier than the other, but I'll let you decide on that. Some general information about patching. When you're putting a patch on a parachute, you put it on the inside. So if it's a round parachute, inside. If it's a ram air parachute, inside, inside. So the ribs don't really matter until you get to the external loaded rib and then make sure inside. The next thing you want to figure out is how you orientate the weave of the fabric. Uh, if you were asked the question, which way do you orientate the warp threads when you're patching a parachute, that's an incredibly generic question. I didn't say it was round, I didn't say it was square, I didn't tell you anything about it. I said warp threads orientated when you're patching a parachute. And the correct answer is, same as original manufacturer. So if you are patch in a bias constructed round parachute you'd pay attention to which way the warp threads go and you would line up your warp threads the same i've said enough on that now i used to teach patches in all different sizes and i don't do that anymore i now just teach a basic six inch patch because i could repair this area of damage with a much smaller patch but i'm not going to uh, the nice thing about six inch patches uh, is that if there are multiple patches on a parachute because they're the same size, they kind of go away, you don't really see them. Whereas funny looking shaped ones start to look a little bit like a clown's clothes. Um, also, it's much easier from a system point of view of always knowing how you're approaching your patch. So I'm going to teach you this, but you can obviously use this information and expand it out in any direction you want to. That's, that's for you to do. Uh, one other thing I didn't say yet was the correct material to use when you're patching a parachute is the same as original manufacturer. So if it was made out of ZP, you'd use ZP. If it's made out of F111, you'd use F111. Um, and you'll be making that decision yourself uh, when you're patching your parachute. So let's get started on how to do a 6-inch patch. If you take a look down at my example of material here, you'll notice I've got an X in the middle and I've just damaged this. And I'm going to pretend right now that I'm on the inside of a parachute. And I'm going to take a 6 inch quilting square and I'm going to center it over the damage. And I'm going to try to somewhat align the weave with the square. And I say somewhat because very often the weave is slightly off uh, a right angle. It's not quite a perfect weave. So you've got to get it close but not perfect. I'll now take a soft tip marker. Typically I use a crayon, a Dixon marking pencil, but I'm going to use this hoping it shows up better in the video and this is a disappearing ink marker that's built for fabric but it is important to remember to use something that's soft tipped you don't want anything that's going to score or damage the material and I'll just restate that I'm presently using a six inch square and I'm pretending that I'm on the inside of the parachute good so I'm marking around my theoretically damaged parachute. There we go. Now hopefully we can see that. And I'm going to put a little tell mark here that indicates the direction of the warp threads. And I know that because I can see the salvage on my example here. Now I would select a piece of material that's same as original manufacturer. And in this case, because we're doing an exercise here, I'm just going to slide over. I'm going to use exactly the same piece of material. And now I've changed to a six and a half inch square. So this was a six inch square, boom. And now I've got a six and a half inch square. I'm gonna line it somewhat with the weave of the fabric. And I'm gonna mark all the way around it. So just to recap, I've made a six inch square on the canopy. And now, out of my patching fabric, I'm marking around a six and a half inch square. But wait, there's more. I'm gonna slide it over now a half an inch like so and line it up again and I'm going to draw around that so I've now got something that's almost a seven inch square on the outside with a six inch square in the middle yeah I know you didn't think it was going to be a geometry lesson so that's the way it is and now I'm just going to fill in those missing corners And this time I'm going to put my warp thread line up on my patch. 
So what I've got here now is a six inch square inside a seven inch square. I've got a half an inch all the way around. That's for my seam later on. I'm now going to cut that patch out and I'm going to do it using scissors. These are just cheap scissors from Costco. I used to buy expensive scissors and I kept getting upset every time people destroyed them. Now I buy cheap scissors. And one, they don't seem to destroy them anymore. And two, I don't care about them when they do. It's not a great approach to the planet, but it is what it is. So what I'm doing now is I'm cutting around my seven inch square. Which is gonna be my patch. And I'm sure it goes with that same, but you wouldn't normally cut your patch out of your parachute. And I hope it goes with that same. You can hot cut this if you prefer to. I personally don't like to anymore as it has a tendency to weld the fabric to whatever you've cut it from, you know, sheet of glass or whatever, and then you may pull some of the strands uh, and damage your patch piece before you even get to sewing. So I'm now going to do a quick check and make sure that I have indeed got a six inch square that lines up with my other one more or less, and there it is, good, and I've got a half inch seam allowance all the way around. The last thing I'm going to do, another trick that the military were kind enough to teach me, is I'll take my fabric and I'm going to fold it down that half inch line. I'm just going to have it take a little bit of a set. I'm going to do the same again. And you'll notice I'm doing it in a corner where I've put my little warp thread tail mark on. There we go. Excellent. So when I start sewing, I'm going to start in this corner here. I'm going to go all the way around the patch and I'm going to sew the patch onto the inside of the canopy. I've got to try and remember to stop about a half inch before each corner so that I can still fold the next leg under. I'm going to want to over sew my beginning and end by a minimum of an inch or an inch and a quarter or more accurately four inches. So we've cut our patch out now and we've brought our fake parachute over to the machine. The first thing I'll do before I uh, start sewing my patch is I'll take a piece of similar material to that which I'm going to patch on. I'll make sure that my machine is correctly threaded. I don't have a burr on the needle. And typically I check how much thread I have in the bobbin, but I'm planning on running out of bobbin during this patch just so I can show you how to handle it. I'm now going to just sew off a small area of the fabric and what I'm going to do is check my stitches per inch and my thread tension. As you probably noticed earlier the thread tension was a bit wonky on us and I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, but let's see how we're doing now. So it looks pretty good on the upper thread, it looks pretty great on the lower thread too. And I'm now going to measure my stitches per inch so I'll just drop this ruler down on any given stitch, count the remainder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a not quite eight. That's my preferred stitch density for a patch and a parachute. Now, I said earlier the correct stitch is per inch is seven to 11, and that is mostly true as a theoretical answer, but in reality, same as original manufacture. So if you measure the canopy and they made it at eight, eight is a good number. If they made it at nine, nine is a good number. You get what I'm saying. Um, so you can empirically observe what the stitches per inch your parachute was made at. Um, so now I'll bring my canopy piece underneath the needle and I'll fold up my patch piece where I've already kind of pre-folded it a little bit like so and I'll introduce this corner with the telltale mark on it underneath the needle and into the corner. Now a word on these lines, these lines are just guidelines, they're not absolutes, okay? Think about it, this is about, I don't know, somewhere around a sixteenth of an inch thick, we've got another one there, another one there, another one there. We could off, be off by as much as a quarter of an inch, done everything right. The only thing we want to get out of these lines is so that we can kind of accurately mimic parallel and perpendicular, so don't freak yourself out if you're not absolutely on the line. It's more important that your patch is relatively flat. So, so far I've just put the needle down into the work, I haven't yet made a stitch, and I'm going to get my patch so it's lined up with my guideline, 
and then I'll hold both my threads threads for the first three to five three to four stitches there we go and now I'm off and running I'm trying to stay about a sixteenth of an inch inside the patch so I'm on the patch but I'm close to the edge it takes a bit of getting used to let's be fair about it but just do your best okay and it's not the end of the world if you fall off the patch we can always unpick any offending stitches and over so I might even do that ha, not on purpose if I do it it's because I messed up and um, before I get to within a half inch of the edge here I've got to stop and now I've got to fold this edge under now there's some folks out there in our business that do this with hemostats and they are ninjas there's no doubt about it and I'm completely incompetent with a hemostat so I'm not even going to try and teach you bada boom luckily my needle is right where I want it for this corner I've put just the point of the needle in the eye has not yet entered the work and now I'm going to turn 90 degrees before I even start sewing I'm going to pull up my the end I begun on and try to boom 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 using my little trick pulling up the, bo the bobbin thread I'm going to trim them out if you don't do this now you'll forget later on and it ends up being a big old mess and making your beautiful patch look less than perfect that's a shame so now what I'm going to do is take a little crease down this seam like so and I'll just line it up with my guideline and if it went past a square let's say here I'd replicate that all the way down, but as it is, I got lucky. I'm pretty much right on the line. Pure luck. There we go. And I'm now going to just come down that line. Stopping again about, oh, just over a half inch from the fold. Do the same again. Fold it. into the corner one more stitch beautiful just the point of the needle and turn it now this time I'm on my third side I'm actually going to do something a little different in a moment I'll start out the same way I always do which is just to make my crease but now I'm going to pull it lightly in this corner here so that the patch can fall where it wants to. I'm not going to make it abide by some arbitrary line. I'm going to let the patch sit naturally where it wants to. You're going to end up with a better result that way. Now I'm going to carry on. And I'm about there again, just shy of my half inch from the corner. It's time for me to make this fold. Now it's pretty likely someone somewhere is going to forget and sew to the corner and you're going to have to unpick a little bit, make your fold, and then do your over sew. Remember, minimum of an inch, inch and a quarter, or probably better off with something bigger than that. Sew to my corner. Boom. Just the point. And I'll turn it. And you'll also notice I'm keeping the uh, patch on the inside of the sewing machine head. I don't know why, but I found that to be the most effective way for me to do it. And I don't think it's anything to do with being right-handed or left-handed. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but typically, if I was doing this patch, I'd have all the parachute off on this side here. And I'd just have the area I'm trying to work on under the head. Now, that's a little bit of an idealized way of explaining it, but it's near enough. All right, looks like I'm going to get lucky and my patch is actually going to fit right on my lines. But again, don't freak out if yours is just a little bit off the lines as long as it's sitting flat on the material. I'm now going to enter the work where I started initially. And I'm going to over sew, and I've already said it enough, but I'll say it again. I typically go with PD's recommendations of about four inches, because uh, frankly, it, uh, it never seems to unravel. If you've got something as little as one inch, over the course of a season or two, you can have it unravel, and then you end up re-sewing the same patch, which is no big deal, but hey, why do it? Now I'll trim out my top and bottom thread, and I've now sewn my patch piece to the inside of my parachute. Now what I'm going to do is... 
flip over my parachute and cut out my damaged area. But before they do that, we're going to take a second and look at something. We started out with a flat two-dimensional piece of material. Well, it's now three-dimensional. It's got a little bit of a bowl shape to it. You can probably see that in the video. I hope so. Because what's happened is every time we make a stitch, essentially we're tying a knot with two threads. And it shrinks the material up. And you can see that shrinkage now. And this is why I favor the seven, inch, seven stitches per inch over the 11 stitches per inch end of the deal. It's because I've got less shrinkage to handle. It's less of a, a pain. Um, Strength-wise, they've been making parachutes for a while with seven stitches per inch, and they seem to be handling it, so I'm not even going to bother getting into that today. What we're going to do now is uh, mark the area that we're going to cut out. And I'm going to use a crayon, because I forgot to bring the pen over this time. And I'm going to use this ruler. Now, I buy these for a specific reason. They're five-eighths of an inch wide. You can get them on Amazon, like a dollar or something. And the reason I use them is I can drop it onto the inside of my damaged area and pull it until it just slides up against the stitches, like so. So I'm not even taking a measurement. I'm just relying on its width. I draw my line. I can do that all the way around. Now the next thing I gotta do is cut some easements so that I can fold the material under. Now we have the privileged position here that we can actually see our patch piece through the canopy piece. I think you can probably see the old the fold here in the corner. Now normally that's not the case that you won't be able to see it. So normally you've got to kind of do an imaginary line going from this corner to this corner, and you typically come back about one, two, three squares. And you want to stop about a half of a square before this corner, if you can see it. You stop about a half of a square before it, because obviously when you cut the material, it's going to fray out a little bit. And it's going to fray into that corner about a half a square. But if you cut to the corner, it's going to fray past it. Not the end of the world. It may not even be a pass or fail thing, but it's certainly going to be an appearance thing. So let's do our best. I'm now going to cut out my damage. And I'm going to be as careful as I can not to cut the patch. I'd be lying if I said I've never done that. I've probably never done it more than 50 times. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. So I've cut the damage out, now I'm going to cut my easements for the folds. Stop in about a half a square before the corner, right about that. And while I'm doing this now, some folks use pins, I already said hemostats, I know people who use tape. I think I've heard of some who use glue, uh, basting tips. I have no opinion on any of that stuff. Uh, as I test myself out earlier, I'm just incompetent. This is the way that I found that I can do it well, so I'm doing it this way. You don't have to do it my way. If your way gets a good result, I'm happy. Okay, I'm going to start now folding my canopy piece under my patch piece. And you'll notice I'm starting on the exact opposite side of my oversole. Now, it's not a strength issue. It's just that this has two scoops of shrinkage, and I don't want to fight it until I've got going. So I'm going to start on the exact opposite side. And what I'm going to do is fold my canopy piece under my patch piece, like so. I'm going to chase it into that corner. And then I'll bring the needle down so that I'm still on the canopy. And I'll hold my thread for the first three or four stitches. 
and then I will try and put a bit of a crease in my canopy piece this time and I want to try and keep this sitting flat I don't want it to kind of bunch up like that or the equivalent on the bottom side which would be that so I want to try and keep those sitting flat I also don't want any raw edges sticking out here so I'm going to get a nice fold I'll let it take a set and I'll tension it and hopefully you can see something there now you'll notice this dimension that's been sewn is shorter than this side well because it's got shrinkage in it like we talked about earlier but don't freak yourself out because as you move forward down the seam the canopy and patch will naturally shrink on the back side of the needle as you make your new stitch so don't worry about it just make sure you're keeping it flat and if it feels like you've got a little bit of a bow wave like half a square of extra material leave it in front of the needle it will magically go away when you get to the corner because it will have shrunk to the same dimension. I hope that made sense to you. That took me about 20 years to figure out. Never claimed to be very smart. Though. And I can hear my bobbin jingling, so I'm expecting to run out of bobbin pretty soon. And that one actually is on purpose, that mistake. So there we go. Just inside on the corner. I'm going to do the same as I did last time, remembering to cut my bitter end or tail of thread up. I've made my corner with just the tip of the needle in and now I will fold canopy piece under the patch piece. Take a little bit of a crease and chase it down again. Trying to stay about, I don't know, a sixteenth or a 32nd, or if you prefer, about a millimeter, a millimeter and a half from the edge. Don't have to worry about the third side this time from a point of view of where it's going to land, because obviously the patch is now anchored. But this is going to be my fight, and you can already see now I've got a horrendous amount of shrinkage down here, and it's going to fight me to the ground. And uh, I'll be honest, this is where the real skill comes in now. And, and I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet, but obviously I should be slightly better at this than someone who's never done it. And what I'm really going to be trying to do is stretch my material back to a flat shape, like so, and then feed it at the speed the machine works at. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, that takes a little while to develop. Not as long as you'd think, but it takes a little bit. Now, let's see if I can pull it off now that I've bragged it up real good because you've got to be super careful not to feed faster than the machine or you're going to end up with too few stitches per inch or slower than the machine by retarding it because then you're going to end up with too many stitches per inch and that is a pass or fail criteria so you want to be careful with it boom I think I got away with it so far so good and I'll be shocked if that bobbin doesn't run out on me now because it's exactly the worst possible time for it will manage. You know what, I don't think I've gone quite far enough here, so I'll just edge it over and do a half stitch. There it is. Come on Murphy, if you're watching, now's the time to run out of bobbin. All right. Typical Murphy, right? When you want it to happen, it doesn't. There we go. So, anyway. So that's my patch. I've sewn it on. It's fairly flat. I don't have any um underages or overages. I don't have raw edges sticking out. I've got a nice over sew that exceeds the minimums that I need. I use the correct size of thread, which is size E correct type of thread which is nylon bonded I've got 7 to 11 stitches per inch I've used the correct material which was same as original manufacture and I orientated my warp threads the same as original manufacture and what have I forgotten and I put it on the inside of the parachute great now being as our Murphy wouldn't play I'm gonna now fake it I'm gonna break a stitch and pretend we ran out of thread let's just pretend for the sake of this movie but we ran out of thread. Can I do this without damaging the parachute? Boom, yeah, I've cut that thread. 
So if you guys will just humor me for now, we'll pretend, come on, there it is, that for some reason I had to stop there. Let's say I fell off the edge and I have to remove that stitch. I'm going to try and make it real blatant so you can see it on the video. There you go. So what I would have to do if I have a broken or missing stitch or if I've started or stopped for some reason is I'd have to just do an over sew so don't freak yourself out. I guarantee you that Precision and PD and everybody else that makes parachutes run out of thread sometimes when they made your canopy. And somewhere they've had to do something like this, which is an over sew. <laughs> So all I'm doing is making sure again I meet those minimums of inch, inch and a quarter or nearer four inches. I'm actually not going to go to the four inch end on this one. I'm kind of laboring the point as it is. But that would be a perfectly acceptable way for you to turn in your patch or put it back out in the field without having to re-sew the whole thing just because you had a couple of offending not so great stitches. Ta-da!